YouTube! So you guys have seen the bubbling cauldron at Home Depot. Well, I've already got a cauldron, but I really need a tripod for mine. So today, we're going to build that right now. Okay, YouTube. So outside my shop, I have a lot of forestry. I went and cut down uh, three, probably 11, 11 and a half foot so uh, oak uh, limbs that I can use for this. And again, if you don't have a forest available to you, you can totally use 2x2s, two uh, or you can go ahead and use PVC, the old standby, because you can always corpse it and cut it up and distress it to look how you want it to look. So I do want to make a tripod. I love the Home Depot uh, version of the bubbling pot and cauldron, but since I got a big old cauldron, I got to make me the tripod. And I thought I want one that's going to last for years, that I can set up and take down to be easy to store. I can just throw it behind the shed and leave it outside. So I went ahead and I grabbed uh, oak branches for myself. So we got a couple of things to do to prep it. Let's get going. Okay, YouTubes. So I went over to the Home Depot and I grabbed me some eye hooks. Doesn't matter what side you use. You just need one little eye hook somewhere towards the top of your project. And again, depending on how tall your pot is and how tall you want your uh, tripod shafts to be, uh, you can place them where you want. I'm gonna leave probably a foot and a half, two feet sticking out of the top. So we're just gonna drill a small little pilot hole. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick our eye hook right in the hole. And we're gonna have to do this three times. All right. Oh man, that's a bear. Okay. And we'll just take a little screwdriver and twist her down and seat it. Okay, YouTube, so I had a hell of a time standing these things up, trying to get them up one by one by myself. Uh, so what I went ahead and did is I laid them all down and I ran the wire through all the eye hooks up here. So now I should be able to stand them up and they'll be able to hold their weight and then I can twist the wire tie down as I need to. Okay, YouTube, so I barely needed a ladder to stand these guys up. I went ahead and got ahead and surrounded the pot. And now I gotta go all the way up there and put the cross brace in and then wire tie the cross brace down. So I got just another piece of wood to stick from the shop. All right, so I'll fall off my ladder and then we'll just wedge it through. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and wrap it around with your wire ties or a zip tie or use your wires. They don't matter. Okay, YouTubes. So I got our Dollar Tree rope. This stuff is a buck for 10 feet. I love this stuff. You can use as much or as little as you want. And I'm just gonna go ahead and try and bind all these guys together. Gives us some strength, hides our hardware so you don't see it. And over time, it'll start to rust. And hey, that's cool too if it wants to rust. So I'm gonna just wrap this stuff all the way around underneath tie everything make it tight go around everything i'm going to bind the whole top of this thing like an old school teepee like an indian would okay youtube so that's three lengths of rope that costs us three bucks what i want to do next is i want to put some cool skulls on top of there what's a cool witch's cauldron without any skulls so i've got some nightmare maker skulls fresh out of the uh, mold i went ahead and sawed them off even on the bottom we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the cannibal uh, tiki torches I'm going to drill out the eyes, I'm going to put a hole through the top, only it's going to be a rough hole because I want those to sit right on top of the posts. We can slide them off when we store this thing, so they'll be on and off and gravity will hold them on. So that's why I left the excess on the very top of the, uh, of the tripod for the cauldron. Okay, YouTubes, I got our skulls all set up. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and make some holes, give these guys a serious lobotomy so we can make room for them to slide down on top of the tripod. I've got an inch and a half wafer bit or paddle bit. You can get these at the hardware store. It's the largest one I have, so if it's not big enough, I'll just go ahead and ream them out so we can make some holes. And I'm going to go ahead and file the teeth on these guys and open them up because just like the uh, cannibal tikis, we're going to go ahead and torch these next. Uh, and I'll link that video down below for you guys too so you can see how I prep some of these skulls. But uh, let's get to make some holes in these guys so we can get them ready to go on top of our tripod. There we go. It ain't got to be pretty. And we're going to go all the way through the bottom. And we'll ream them out. And that's what we got. If I got to go wider, I'll just ream it out. So this should hopefully slide over the, uh, the stick. If not, I can ream it out because our next step, after I get all the holes done, it's the die grinder. 
I'm gonna go ahead and ream all these guys out and clean up their jaw lines and their eye lines and their jaws and stuff to get them all cleaned up. And then we're moving right onto the torch. And I'll probably put some horns on one of these guys, like a little demon skull, because my swamp witch is a demon somewhere. That's what she uses her cauldron for. So uh, I'm gonna get busy. We come back. We're gonna be ready to start uh, torching these guys and throw some stain and paint on these things. Okay, YouTube, so I got our skulls all dremeled out. I went ahead and fouled between the teeth and opened them up a little bit. I want to do just like I did before with my uh, cannibal tiki torches. We're just going to take some brown, some red, doesn't matter. I just want like sort of a pre-fill. We're going to flip our skulls upside down, and we're just going to spray them out brown to kind of get some color in there. It ain't got to be perfect. It ain't got to be pretty. Go on top of the hole. You want to do the eye sockets. And you don't have to use brown. You could use white if you want to have boiled skulls on top of there. But I got to go through all these skulls and brown them out. And then this guy went ahead and just added some rigid horns. It's the same material that the uh, that the skulls are made out of. And I just took those little bamboo skewer sticks and put those in there. So the horns are just kind of held in by bamboo skewer sticks. So I got a little demon skull. So we'll brown him out, same way. It's going to eat away some of the insides a little bit probably, but that's okay. We just wanted to get some color on the backside. Maybe a shot in the eyes, a shot around the mouth, whatever. And inside that hole. Alright, so I'm going to knock these out. And then after we get done doing the brown, we got to move on to the torch again. We're going to put some real color in these with the torch. So I've got this little pathetic guy all set up to go. We'll stick him here. We'll put on the torch. And just like the cannibal tiki torches, we're just looking for some color. We just want to kind of brown that, uh, that foam. It'll instantly take on that dark, like aged patina that I really like. Uh-oh, fire in the hole. All right, I should probably let these dry first, or just don't spray inside. Give your time, give your uh, skull some time to dry. But we want to brown these guys just like the tiki torches. Okay, YouTube, so now we are nicely golden brown. Uh, Vince over here bit the dust. He caught a little bit on fire, but he'll be okay. Uh, I got some old red oak stain here that I was using on other projects, an old can. I'm going to go ahead and just dip in, and we're going to just filthy this guy up. Now this comes to the point where you can put whatever on these you want, guys. You can use old stain, you can use old paint, you want to do black light, uh, the sky is really the limit. So I just like to kind of splatter these guys up, brush it on. This oil stain will probably take a good day to dry, so I'll probably just let these sit overnight. We'll pick up on this tomorrow, but I want to get all these skulls done tonight, so tomorrow we're ready to ram them down right on a tripod. So that's sort of the idea, and we'll take our little rig and we'll wipe away. And if you want to leave more on, you can do more. If you want to clear these, I can hear you guys saying now like, but cobwebs, aren't you going to put some fiberglass on them? Nah, I may hit them with a coat of flat clear or something like that. I want Mother Nature to kind of beat them up and kind of take its course. But uh, I do want them kind of grimy and filthy, but for outside skulls, I can pull them off when they're done. We'll slide them off the top and we'll store them for winter time. So maybe next year if you want to do a different skull or want to put a different finish on it, we can do that. So we'll have this guy like this. And like I said, you can use any color stain, anything you want. This demon skull was pretty cool. So I thought, hey man, what if we did him in perma blood? So he would look like, the hell was that? So he looked like he was all bloody and red. Maybe that's the way, the type of demon he was. So my plan was just, just kind of put some in my hands. And we'll just bloody this guy up. If we got to, I'll take some stain, the stain brush, and I'll brush it in. But man, look at that face, man. We'll give him a nice crystal bloody red finish. Maybe I'll do two coats or so. And then maybe I'll go back and I'll do some permagrime on uh, Bob here. Uh, Vince sort of bit the dust. I got to kind of put some shish kebab sticks in him, put him back together. But I think that uh, the perma blood skull will be extra really cool for like a demon skull dangling from her, uh, her little tripod. Okay, YouTubes. So our uh, skulls are done. I went ahead and pinned uh, Mr. Melted Face back together with some skewer sticks and some wood glue. I used some of the uh, Spanish moss over here on uh, this skull and kind of laced them up with some twine and stuff like that after the stain. Uh, this little skull right here, the demon skull, is all perma gloss or perma blood, so it's nice and glossy and shiny red. I think that's a nice cool look. And uh, this guy is when we just did the wood stain on. So I think the skull is ready to go. Uh, we're ready to hang those on the tripod, or on the tripod, but it's getting ready to storm like hell outside. So we're gonna go ahead, let's paint some chain, get our accessories ready, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw all this stuff on the tripod. Okay, YouTube, so I've got a piece of real rusty chain I've had hanging on the tree outside for like eight months over the winter time. So I kind of want to mimic this. So I'll hang this guy here. I've got some plastic chain I buy by the box on Amazon. And I've already went ahead and just ran it through a scotch bright just to kind of scuff it up a little bit because I don't like painting on anything shiny. So I kind of run this through the ringer. 
make sure I got to take some of that gloss off. Anything that's flatter is easier to paint. So just like in our victim body, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna paint our chain in a pile. So anytime you're painting chain, at least what I like to do is just like when we did the body victim, uh, I've got two colors here, a brown and a satin brown and a, or a red, red, what is this? A flat red primer brown. And I've got a satin rustic orange. So orange and brown. So I like to go ahead and just pile the chain up. I'm gonna go brown first. I like to work darker colors out. And then I'll go top coat with the orange. Again, it ain't gotta be perfect. Now I'll go ahead and just flip it up, pick it up. Same thing. Blast it brown. Hit it with the orange. Same thing, pick it up. All right. We'll go a little less this time. And there's a couple spots of orange. And what I like to do for added believability is some good old paprika. Put a nice heavy dump of paprika on there because it really sticks and makes the chain look heavy and wet. It'll stick right to that fresh paint. So add some more paprika, sprinkle it on there for heavy scale. And then I will go ahead and I will throw a couple of satin coats on here to lock this paprika down. And some of it will flake off over the years. It's not a big deal, but we can always reapply it. Okay, YouTube, so I went ahead and put some satin clear on our chain. That's drying. It looks nice and heavy and scaly. So we're going to let that dry. And I went around the garage and I gathered up some accessories. So for my swamp witch, I've got a trout line from hell made from uh, Lowe's fishes. These guys were like six bucks. I actually showed them in my Lowe's video. I grabbed a bunch on clearance a couple years ago. So I'm definitely going to put our little trout line from hell up on her uh, tripod. And then for our crossbar, just like in the Home Depot one, I've got two old skulls I hang outside every year that I made up years ago. These are spirit Halloween skulls. I ho hollowed out and put some hair on and a little bit of uh, toilet paper and corpse things. So these guys are pretty gnarly. So I'm gonna have a skull across each uh, crossbar on either side of the top. I got a gourd that I got from behind my buddy's uh, house that his wife threw out last Halloween. So thank you, Hans, I appreciate it. So this guy just dried out and I put a couple of coats of satin clear on it. So hopefully it'll be fine outside. If not, I'll just get some more. And a couple of uh, months ago, I was at uh, Hobby Lobby and they had these guys on sale. They were like the spring collection, whatever. All the spring crap was 50% off. So this guy was a spatula. I just kind of sawed into with a cutoff wheel and uh, I cleared them and I stained them with wood stain. I beat the hell out of the spoon. You can see it's kind of warped and beat up. So I want to hang a spoon. I got to find another ring for this though, so I can hang it off of her uh, tripod since she does cook in there. And she uh, summons demons out of it as well. So any of the little stuff you can find, I mean, you can throw anything on there. Uh, you know, walk around your haunt, find small stuff, and uh, we can put it all on our college and make it look cool if you want to do this at home for yourself. So okay, YouTube. We had like horrible storms last night and rain, and man, this thing held strong, so I'm super psyched already, and I don't even have the feet staked down yet. Let's go ahead and stick our, stick our uh, skulls up here where they gotta be. Ooh, it's pretty high. All right, let's do, uh, I did go ahead and cut one of these branches off. Let's see, we'll maybe do demon over here. Put one guy over here. And I got these two guys. I got Mr. Crispy, whose face I set on fire. And the voodoo looking skull. Maybe I can stick this guy here. Oh, yeah. That's freaking cool. I love it. Oh, Mr. Crispy. That's cool. And then I got my hanging skull. Hell yeah. Woo! Suck it, Home Depot. All right, let's get our accessories and uh, let's accessorize this bad boy. We gotta put some hooks on there first. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that next. Okay, YouTube, so when I cut the uh, tripod poles, I cut a bunch of tree branch crotches uh, to use as little accessory hooks. So I thought we could probably like uh, hot glue these on or that cord's not gonna friggin' reach. So uh, let's use rope. I guess you could use some screws too if you wanted to just use screws and then cover them with the uh, with the rope, again, we'll just use more dollar store rope. And we'll just kind of tie off and wrap it around. Make it all uh, rustic looking. And I think these can be our accessory hooks. Like I said, you can screw them down if you want. We can hang our accessories off there. 
And I also thought it would be pretty cool is if I had a couple of hooks, I'll put them all around the poles. What if we did like a drying branch of some kind? Like a drying rack for her unmentionables or for gourds or for food or for something else. I thought maybe that'd be another cool little setup we could do. So I got an extra stick cut for that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get these uh, accessory hooks all twined on and then we're gonna accessorize this bad boy. We'll get out the witch and get all our accessories out and set her in place and see what this thing looks like, man. Let's accessorize. Okay, YouTube, so I'm just taking a little bit of wood glue and I'm brushing on all the uh, rope and the twine that way it'll kind of bind it together so we're not gonna hot glue anything. I did manage to get a couple of screws in, so we're gonna call that good. So everything's glued up, so that's why it's kind of a funky looking color. I went and got Zira, got her out of the garage. What's up, girl? Uh, we're gonna accessorize, man. I've got all her stuff. I've got her, her uh, trout line from hell, which is a bunch of uh, Lowe's fishes that I just kind of corpsed. I need to put some eyeballs in these guys. I got our little drying rack. I thought maybe we could use this for clothes or for food or for creepy cloth, whatever. I mean, you guys can pretty much let your imagination run wild with this. I mean, there is no shortage of ideas for a swamp witch. Put her fish over there. I got her uh, spoon and her knife. You can easily hang her cooking utensils real close. Put those up there over her pot. I got some uh, fake flowers that look like dried flowers that kind of hang up on side down. I think they were Hobby Lobby or something like that, fairly cheap. So we can put those on a little uh, hook or something. I've got her gourd that uh, I dried out from my buddy's wife's house behind their house. So we can hang our gourd up. I mean, you can literally throw anything at her and deck this whole thing out, man. Uh, again, I want to go over the base too with you guys. I hung our chain. This is our paprika chain up here. You guys probably can't see that. So up high is our paprika chain that we painted yesterday. Here's our metal chain in case the legs want to split and give out. Uh, I got it anchored up there so our skulls know everything's thing's done. So I think we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to throw a couple of torches out and try and get some night shots for this old girl so you guys can see her in the dark when she's all lit up. Okay, YouTubes. So on the bottom of our poles, just like on the top, uh, I don't have this thing anchored down yet. When I move it to its final position for Halloween, I'll anchor it down. But my plan is to take an eye hook, and just like we did the top, I'm going to drill a hole in the back of the leg. I'm going to put an eye hook in, and then I'm going to hammer a stake down to hold it down. So that way all three corners of our tripod are locked down. And if you want to, and you have extra skulls, you want to make extra skulls, you could easily knock a hole in the top of the skull, uh, pick the skull up, slide it up, mount your poles, and then slide the skull down so it sits in front of your pole, your leg pole, and almost acts like a foot. So it's another option you could easily do, and you're hiding your secure uh, little tie downs and stakes uh, at the same time. Dried flowers. I really like the top.
Okay, YouTubes. That's my version of the Home Depot tripod and cauldron. I had a blast building it, man. We used oak poles, so these are going to last for a lot of years. We just used a lot of, about $10 of dollar store rope and twine and some sticks and some uh, odds and ends of little stuff I've had. We decorated our plastic chain up so it looks real and crusty and rusty, some skulls. And you guys could take this so much further, man. And I may add on to it before Halloween once I get it set in the yard where it's going to be for the season. So, uh, man, I hope you guys dig it. I hope uh, Zira digs it. This is her, her uh, tripod from now on. So, uh, man, if you guys get a chance, go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror, Vic at Monster Misfits, and Dave at the Weird Kids Show. Guys, we're doing year-round projects. It never stops for us. Uh, if you guys are building tripods, I want to see your Halloween projects and stuff. Visit up uh, Facebook at Cobwebs and Candlesticks and show me what you're building, man. So uh, if you guys are doing a swamp witch or a tripod or a call and you guys were decking out your yard, I want to see it, man. Share it with everybody. So until I see you guys again, keep it evil. Thanks for watching. What's up, girl? What's up? Who's your daddy? <laughs>